in the previous video, we introduced the energy management systems and learned about the types of services which they can provide. And we mentioned that the supervisory control and data acquisition system, or SCADA system, is needed to implement these services. In this video, we will define the SCADA system, its design and operation, and why it is so important in maintaining a smart, effective power system. SCADA refers to the combination of telemetry and data acquisition. Data is first collected at remote substations. These substations serve as hubs in the energy system and they contain transformers, switching equipment, protection relays and a variety of sensors to monitor those devices. The data is then delivered via cable or radio communication systems to a central location called the control center. At the control center, the data from many substations is processed and used to detect instability of faults. If a fault is detected, an alarm will be raised. In the event of a disturbance, the operator at the control center can issue control actions for distributed components out there in the power system. Throughout this process, the data is saved uh, for future analysis. Uh, after a disturbance occurs, a report is generated, allowing us to determine the cause of the fault and to facilitate proper billing. Through the combination of these actions, it's possible to monitor and operate a power network from a centralized location in a secure and efficient way. Starting at the edge of the system, we have the sensor devices. These sensors can be analog or digital and they are attached to grid components, such as transformers. We measure the signals of interest, such as voltage and current, to determine the performance. These plane sensors are usually wired to programmable logic controllers or PLCs. In addition to the sensors, there are digital protection and control relays operating circuit breakers and switching gear. In the past, mechanical or manual uh, relays were used, which could only protect a single piece of equipment. Now it is it's more common to use intelligent electronic devices, abbreviated as IEDs, which are multifunctional uh, digital protection modes. These PLCs and IEDs are connected to remote terminal units or RTUs, which are centralized uh, computer systems located in each substation. The RTU collects all the measurements from different sensors uh, and connected to these RTUs are also displays so that if operators are present, they are able to manually control the substation. Next, there is a communication network, which is ideally a private network. Uh, this network is used to carry the information that is generated at the RTUs. And this network ends at the master terminal unit, or MTU. The MTU is located in a central control center. And it collects and processes measurement data from several RTUs. Finally, in the control center, we have the human machine interface, or HMI. This is where the operators can observe the incoming signals and manually control the network. All of these components must work together in order to make the SCADA possible. So what does a SCADA control center look like? Well, just as you probably imagine, a room filled with computer screens and alarms and data. These large displays are monitored by the human operators 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Control rooms are highly secure facilities because the electricity grid is critical for a country to operate properly. Now for these security concerns, there's always a backup control room in a secret location. So what are the pros and cons of having a modern SCADA system? First, it is safer. SCADA can eliminate the need 
for personnel at these remote substations. This is good because the equipment in a substation, such as transformers or switchgear, can be quite dangerous. If they fail, they may even explode. Using intelligent electronic devices, we can monitor these devices remotely over telecommunication networks, keeping people out of danger. SCADA also makes the system more efficient by allowing a system operator in a central control room to monitor and control equipment status and perform switching actions and even have an eye on process parameters. This allows for a more coordinated network. And these systems are also easily scalable. SCADA systems enable the system designer to implement an application that can grow with its expanding needs. As the network expands, more sensors and RTUs can be added, while control actions can still be taken from one and the same control room. One important aspect to consider is that SCADA honestly can be quite slow <laughs> compared to the speed at which events occur in the power system. Detecting a fault and sending it to the corrective control action done manually by the operator can take some time. Depending on the action required, the SCADA operation can take between seconds and maybe hours. This is why we will also discuss other faster solutions later this week. To summarize in this video, we have introduced SCADA systems. You learned how they operate and about the different components of the system. You also learned why SCADA is such a powerful and valuable tool for the power system operators. In the next video, we will look at SCADA communication protocols.